The Fortunes, by British author and academic Peter Ho Davies is a captivating historical novel, comprising four interconnected short stories. Each story revolves around a character of Chinese descent, with three of them inspired by real individuals, as they navigate their respective eras. The result is a sweeping saga that spans generations within an immigrant family. Notably, The Fortunes received the prestigious Annis Field Wolf Book Award for Fiction and was recognized as a notable book by The New York Times. The first part of the book, Celestial Railroad, delves into the life of Ah Ling, a Chinese orphan who is the product of a union between a white man and a Chinese prostitute. Following the death of his mother, Ah Ling is sold at the tender age of 14 to a laundryman in America. He embarks on a journey to San Francisco, where he toils at Uncle Ling's laundry, harboring dreams of accumulating wealth and success. Alongside him at the laundry is little sister, who juggles her work there with a second occupation as a prostitute. Ah Ling falls deeply in love with her, but she insists on financial compensation before engaging in a romantic relationship. Frequently visiting the laundry is Charles Crocker, a prominent railroad tycoon, who eventually hires Ah Ling as his personal servant. With his first earnings, Ah Ling takes little sister on a date, during which she confides in him that Ng is not only her father, but also essentially her pimp. Tragically, Ng sells little sister to another elderly man, tearing them apart. As Ah Ling continues his service under Charles, he gradually realizes that he is merely a symbolic Chinese employee, employed by Charles to improve his image and relations with the Chinese railroad workers. However, as Ah Ling grows closer to his fellow workers, he discovers a sense of belonging among them. Consequently, he makes the decision to resign from his position as a servant and embark on a new journey, working on the railroad far away from San Francisco. Later on, Ah Ling takes on the role of a bone collector, tasked with gathering the remains of deceased Chinese workers on the railroad and repatriating their bones to China. After years of labor and perseverance, Ah Ling finally amasses enough wealth to return to San Francisco. Upon his return, he reunites with little sister, who has risen to become the madam of a flourishing harem, carving out her own path in life. In a long-awaited moment, little sister finally sleeps with Ling without charging him. The second part of the book, Your Name in Chinese, shines the spotlight on the real-life cinematic icon Anna Mei Wong. Growing up in Los Angeles's Chinatown, Anna develops a deep love for movies and dreams of becoming an actress. However, her father disapproves and resorts to violence. Anna's talent, determination, and willingness to navigate the casting couch propel her career in the film industry. Despite achieving a level of fame previously unheard of for a Chinese actress, she never attains true stardom. The prevalent practice of casting white actors in yellow face to portray Asian characters and the implementation of the motion picture code, which restricts depictions of interracial love, hinder Anna's career. Unable to be paired with white actors and lacking marketable Chinese actors, her success wanes. Anna embarks on a journey to China to work on a documentary but finds herself feeling lost and disconnected from the culture and language. Returning to America, she eventually reconciles with her father. Her Hollywood career experiences ups and downs, leaving her questioning the impact she has had on shaping public perceptions of the Chinese community. However, when she notices traces of her influence in Madame Chang, the First Lady of China, she realizes that she has indeed made a difference. The third story, Tell It Slant, unfolds through the eyes of an unnamed narrator who witnesses the murder of Vincent Chin in 1982. Vincent, who grew up in China, is adopted by a Chinese-American couple in Detroit. He becomes childhood friends with the narrator. Tragically, two white men mistake Vincent for Japanese and murder him, driven by the misguided belief that the Japanese auto industry is stealing jobs from American automakers in Detroit. Vincent's senseless killing becomes a symbol of the destructive impact of racism and ignorance. The narrator grapples with guilt for not preventing the tragedy, which profoundly shapes his self-perception and his view of the United States. The final story, Disorientation, centers around the writer John Ling Smith and his wife, Nola. They embark on a journey to China with the intention of adopting a baby. Given China's one-child-per-family policy, there are numerous baby girls in need of loving homes. However, the adoption process proves to be challenging. John, who is of mixed Chinese heritage, faces expectations from other families on the adoption trip that he should be fluent in the language and well-versed in Chinese culture. 
This lack of connection and language skills weighs heavily on his mind, causing sleepless nights. Feeling restless, he descends to the hotel bar where he engages in a conversation with a prostitute named Pearl. Through their discussion, John gains insight into the hardships endured by many Chinese women. The following day, John and Nola receive heartbreaking news that the child they were initially matched with has passed away. Despite their sorrow, they bravely open their hearts to the possibility of adopting another child. Upon their return to the hotel, they unexpectedly encounter Pearl in the lobby. She extends her well wishes for their adoption and reveals her own plans to start anew in America. Inspired by this encounter, John and Nola decide to name their newly adopted baby girl Pearl, symbolizing the profound impact their meeting had on their lives. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.